Hello and welcome to the panel, where we take a look at graphic novels and talk about their story, art, and everything in between. In honor of Black History Month, we're taking a look at Rodney Barnes' Philadelphia, a gritty cop drama full of blood, guts, vampires, and John Adams. Get ready for a wild ride through America's past and possible future on this episode of The Panel. Hey everyone, I'm your host Anna Mia, and today joining me we have from Previews World, we have consumer marketing digital content editor Troy Jeffrey Allen. Multiple people are biting multiple people. <laughs> How's it going? There you go. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right, and our special guest we have the writer of Scorpio and podcast host of Beyond the Fourth Wall, John Robinson the Fourth. Hey, what's going on, y'all? What's up? How's everyone doing? Cool. Pretty good, pretty good. Chilling. Nice, nice. <laughs> I'm glad really we, excited. I'm glad we get to finish off Black Futures Month in style. Right. You know? yeah. <laughs> there you yeah, go. This yeah. is perfect. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really excited to get into this. So let's go ahead and get started. So when Jimmy, a small town cop, returns home to bury his murdered father, a revered Philly detective, he learns that the city that was once the symbol of liberty and freedom has fallen prey to corruption, poverty, unemployment, <clears throat> brutality, and vampires. Now it's up to Jimmy to stop John Adams, yes, that John Adams, from building an undead army and staging a new American revolution. All right, what were your, what were your thoughts going into this? I'm going to pick on Troy first. Oh man, um, this is actually like the third time I've re I've read this book. Like at least the first six issues, I want to say. Uh, this is something that once I discovered it, like I pretty much have always had it on my pull list. So full bias here. Already love it. Spoiler alert. But uh, yeah, my initial reaction is it good. It's real good. And what about you, John? Yeah, um, so I was one of the people who got on the onto this book late. Like people were talking about it, and it's kind of funny because I, I already liked Rodney Barnes's writing already. So mm -hmm. it was like one of those things. Like I'm, I'm going to read it eventually, and, and we'll see. But everybody was kind of raving, and um, and then finally, like sometime last year, I, I finally, uh, which is pretty late, and they're like thirty issues in. So I finally hopped in on it, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is like this 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 is some real stuff right here. So um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to talk about it for sure. Was it yeah, the I mean, what's better than cop drama and then vampires? I was just and then you do like throw in old presidents, and I was like, okay, I need to figure out what's going on. Right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let's figure out what's going on by digging into the story. Rodney Barnes is an award-winning American screenwriter and producer known for numerous successful TV shows, including The Boondocks, Everybody Hates Chris, Marvel's, Marvel's Runaways, and Wu-Tang, an American Saga. In 2017, he ventured into writing with his, for his first passion, comics. Since then, he's authored The Falcon Comics for Marvel Legacy and Lando Double or Nothing before writing Philadelphia. All right, so let's start digging into this story. And first off, at like the core of this story is this father-son dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't speak on that. <laughs> but <laughs> what were kind of like your thoughts on this this father-son dynamic? You know, did it give you feels? And uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and start with John. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. So like. Uh, man especially especially the black community there's like there's like a huge like like people always talk about daddy issues you know what i mean um, <laughs> and and this book hits on it in a way that is, is kind of unexpected you're like you know you see the cover and you see this guy it's obviously like you know in the first issue he's like kind of scary dark shadowy type of deal and and, and it's it's kind of like okay uh I'm not exactly sure what this is going like if you don't look at the back of you know back of the book type thing i'm not exactly sure what's going on here but i, I kind of expect like just your typical horror but then when it opens up with like it, it hits you hard first with this whole 
uh, father son thing, and you're like, oh, this man's got daddy issues. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and so you imme- you immediately start getting the kind of kind of the feels from that, and um, and I, I love how like 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 flawed characters can really make a story strong. So the fact that they go into this showing that yeah, uh, the uh, da- I'm gonna call him Daddy Sangster, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> right, so yeah. Uh, so so basically daddy is not a good dude uh you know based on his history with his son but everybody knows that there's a lot of there's a lot of complexity with those kind of relationships if you guys listen to certain hip-hop albums and stuff like that uh, Royce and I five had an album talking about his dad you know mm-hmm. where it's like really complex stuff right so um we get to see that in this book so I think I think they did a good job of uh mm-hmm. yeah yeah expressing that mm-hmm. They definitely get it right from the beginning. What about mm-hmm. you, Troy? What do you? What are your thoughts? Well, you know, it's a, you know, I'm really big on themes, so it's, you know, the father son dynamic definitely factors into the larger generational context of the story, where it's like, you know, the multi generations of, of why well, there's multi generations of vampiric corruption, <laughs> you know, or it's like, you know, your relationship from father to father. There's a great subplot. Uh, between this uh, kid and his grandmother that's in the middle that becomes a major aspect of the story as it moves along. So I really enjoyed it. And I particularly enjoyed the um, just the dynamic between the Sangsters, right? Uh, it kind of gave me, for lack of a better example, uh, Henry Jones, Indiana Jones vibes after a while where they're just kind of bickering to each other throughout the mm-hmm. course of the story and taking little jabs at each other. Um, <laughs> but it's also comes from a, a familiarity that's like, you know, well, we're family. What can you do about it? So yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, I never thought about that comparison. That's such a good one, actually. Right, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, this is, you know, a story about vampires, but one of the like really unique things about it, what makes it truly unique is the historical aspect of it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what were your thoughts on bringing in like John Adams and the mm-hmm. Revolutionary War? Like this, like that was just like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what did what did you think, Troy, when you realized that this was this was bringing in some dead presidents? No, right. Yeah, the sons the sons of the republic thing. I like I really love this because it's kind of you know a lot of especially with vampire stories. I would also say maybe zombie stories too. It's really hard to kind of have an original angle, and so when something really does have an original angle, like it really stands out. And I knew that I loved the John Adams story as a as a plot as a plot point for this when he went to go see Hamilton and got pissed off. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh man, that's right. This That story is about him too. And like, yeah, he's probably like, they were laughing at me. And he's just like, screw these guys. <laughs> Humanity can burn. And yeah, like, and just kind of seeing his evolution throughout the years and like how he how he carries that philosophy uh, from from like the early days of America into like the 21st century and beyond. It's kind of like uh, it's it's really fascinating, you know. Like it's 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 an interesting angle to play, and especially dealing with Baltimore, which is an old city, right? And uh, also Philadelphia, of course, which is also an old city. Um, you know, there's history there with, of course, uh, American politics, like very direct history with American politics. So yeah, it's a really interesting angle, and I really appreciate it. I, it it's even revisiting it, I was like, man, this is a really good take on vampires. Like it right. really something interesting to say at the same time but it's also original so shout out to that right super unique mm-hmm. all right what about you john how did you what did you feel about kind of this whole historical aspect right yeah yeah as soon as i saw john adams i was like okay this book is this is this book is is real all right like we got right. real here um you know it's like it's like so you know my first thought was okay is is the villain going to be uh daddy sanks is that is is that is that what we're dealing with here right like, yeah the very first issue and then and then like is it is it kind of pulls the curtain back and and i see john adams and then i see the the name of the arc this first arc is called sins of our fathers mm-hmm. and um yeah. And I and I'm so there's the aspect of obviously with uh, Daddy Sangster and, and, and Sangster Junior, and I'm like, okay, so there's the, the you know the father son dynamic going on, but then we have like our forefathers deal, mm-hmm. and I love that, like when we get the background on Adams, the way they talk about how he had Adams had to live, he had to he had to do the. Um, what the, the follow up to George Washington, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and how that background kind of drove him to where he's going. You know what I mean? Um, and I, I just I just thought that that was such an interesting take. And really, what this to me what this says is 
is you can you can always like you know they say oh every, every story's been dead every story's been told yeah sure there's been a bajillion vampire stories but it depends on your angle and what angle you're going to take with the story and the fact mm-hmm. that the 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 barnes went with this um mm-hmm. yeah that's that's truly like 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 troy said truly truly unique so uh yeah i I knew I was I knew I was locked in when I saw Adams, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Like even, you know, like vampires, it's just such a straightforward thing in like movies and books. And it was great that this was like the whole Hamilton thing. Oh my God, that was hilarious. Right. <laughs> Cause you have those moments, right? And they're so right. such good moments. Mm-hmm. Um now was there like a moment that really stuck with you in the book or something that was like surprising or um I will start picking on Troy. Uh, you know, I, I I love good dialogue, and Rodney Barnes is actually really good at that. There's a line in there that's like "Land of the Free, Home of the Vampire," and I just I just love stuff like that. Like I thoroughly enjoy all the you know all the all the flowery language and how like you know these characters communicate things, and it's a lot of it is very noir based, you know, because that's kind of where these type of uh these kind of these type of conversations come from, you know, where it's like they're it's not regular normal day-to-day speech it's like exaggerated speech and it has this sort of like uh of a uh, 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 drama to it that i really appreciate so there's a lot of beats in this story that feel like that for me yeah very, very yeah great. what about um, you john yeah, like uh, things that pop I, I'll, I'll, the, the, so there's a lot of things there's a lot of things troy mentioned things at the beginning and mm-hmm. um yeah, something about telling a vampire story that has themes that are this strong that are, that weigh heavily on on the black community. Um, man, I, I think the thing that stuck out to me most was seeing. There's actually a cover of it, and then we go into the issue of it. Was the the woman who has the missing signs of of the of the black girl who's now a vampire? You know, mm-hmm. um, I can't and I can't remember. I can't remember that character's name. I'm bad with characters' names, mm-hmm. but <laughs> but there's the, there's a there's a character who who she's a she's 150 years old mm-hmm. but she's but she was turned when you know she's essentially like a teenager i think um and she has yeah her sister has the missing the missing side and that's such a like if you if you look at it, it real life real life history or, or current day not not history current day there's always these signs of these black these black girls these black women that are missing um mm-hmm. that, are, that are kind of floating around and and they get ignored like we don't we don't see these getting like covered on on live action news right um not not to the extent they should be at least um or or, or on local news but we see them all over the internet we see them on TikTok. we see it on twitter and, mm-hmm. and we see the signs up and that was like a really powerful thing for me um and then those two characters have their own dynamic you know about about um whether or not uh, they 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 should live forever as vampires or 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 die like uh, you know mm-hmm. live a life and die like normal people. So there's like they hit a lot of and that's like a that's not even a that's like a C or D plot and it's still so heavy, man. Like it is like, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, like, you so know, many heavy themes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I was just gonna. I was just gonna add. Uh, like, yeah. no, yeah. I was, I was just gonna add that. Like, yeah, we see that actually a lot in the DC area, actually, which is a little, little disturbing. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and I also wanted to add that. Um, you know, there's also this angle of like systems, and systems being like almost like viruses that I also find really interesting here. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of like embodied by the vampires and Adam's belief in how he doesn't want to operate in the existing system, so he's trying to create another system, and then um. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kid with the grandmother, uh, Tevin, Tevin, like challenges that, like, you know what I mean? And so like, all this stuff is really fascinating. Right. Yeah. Here you go. And I just, I just think those are Johnny's on it, man. <laughs> right, right. 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 Yeah. I just, I just, I just love that. I just love all the layers here. Like you said, some of this stuff is like the D plot, but it just has weight. Right. Right. Cause it's so thematically powerful. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's certain points, like there, there's things that Adam says that is, that, that is so powerful too. Like, he he there's there's a there's a one panel very large panel with him kind of by himself and he and he, and he says the uh, you know the other forefather i can't remember exactly what it says but he's like the other forefathers would would think less of me or or, or whatever or think that this is crazy mm-hmm. or something like that and he says but i have something that they lack and he and it, and it's like the bottom right of the panel is his perspective mm-hmm. and it's like he's mm-hmm. lived all these years and he's yeah you know what i mean like you think about presidents where where you know they're they presidents are trying to well in theory they're trying to do the right thing to do <laughs> for you know mm-hmm. to, to send the country down the right direction but they mm-hmm. all you know eventually they all they're a human they they 
you know, have their time and then they, you know, they're eight years in office or whatever, or they die or they, or they get out of the office, they eventually die, whatever. Yeah. Whereas this guy has lived, Adams has lived literally since his time. And he's like, no, I, I, I know, I understand things that you guys can't just by virtue of my experience, my life yeah. experience. You know what I mean? Like, and, and him as a villain is still, even as he's, even as, well, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to give that exact spoiler yet, but even, <laughs> even as the end thing happens, he, 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 he still has words, he still has powerful words, you know, mm -hmm. and the thematics are so strong. <clears throat> yeah, super poignant. Like, um, there were a lot of themes in this that I really enjoyed. I, I really liked Tevin's story, like the whole idea of like, here's this like, you know, street smart kid who most people would probably like, you know, not think that he would be able to to take on this task of like figuring out that this is like a it's basically the same thing, except mm -hmm. there's a different person running it. And so right. for that, it's uh I, I love that he was the one that kind of has discovered this. Um, mm -hmm. because he is so like heart like soft hearted, you know? Because mm -hmm. like the way he is with his grandma, it's like he has this outer persona, but then at the same time, like he's such a like smart and good person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um Absolutely. i wanted to share one little part that was kind of funny to me <laughs> so um there was this part where uh he says this is my bunker hill me the modern day colonel william prescott guiding my troops into battle do not stop until you see the blood in their eyes okay right. so family history on my dad's side i growing up i was always told that i was related to the guy that said that and oh. so when I saw that, I was like, oh, crap, Whoa. is that what look like my, my like, ancestor? And so I like looked it up, so I was like, oh, shit. And of course, like looking up your ancestors from back then, you know, it's like a 50-50 chance they're like a good person. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> like, 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 I don't know. Being a good person. <laughs> and like, yeah, I found out like he never owned slaves. He actually like was, mm. you know, one of the people that tried mm. to get it abolished in uh, Massachusetts. And actually, like, tried to give one of the uh, this, the African American soldiers, uh, Salem Poor, who like fought with him at Bunker Hill, like tried to give him like all this credit, um, mm. you know, and, and was really like advocating for him to be rewarded. Okay. So, like, reading that, I was like, oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I, and I, I really appreciate the history in this. Like, even yeah. the fact that the book prompted yeah. you to go look that up, right? You're like, oh, wait, this is something right. related to me or history, right? That is so, like, that is something that I, I I've always uh, wanted to strive for is is like to to be able to make a fun story, crazy horror story, do cool stuff, have vampires, and still be teaching mm -hmm. like dropping knowledge at the same time. And, mm -hmm. and man, Rodney does that like expertly in this. No, that's amazing because <laughs> like now you have an experience anchored to this story. That's like that's great. Exactly right, right. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was, it was, a, it was like fun, but then also worrying and then also relief. There was a lot of range of emotions. <laughs> yeah, since you, since you're for a roller coaster, right? <laughs> you're off All to right. hook me. Huh? You're off to hook me. You're off to hook. Okay, good. You're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's so much to this story, but I feel like you can't really look at the story without looking at the art because they really go hand in hand with this. I really feel like it, the, mm -hmm. the art style adds to it. So I kind of want to like start adding in some of the art to this. So let's move on to that. Jason, Jason Sean Alexander is an impression expressionist figurative oh goodness i am having a time oh, is an expressionist figurative painter illustrator and comic book creator mm -hmm. alexander pulls from the vulner vulnerability fear and underlying strength of his rural upbringing just outside the haunted home of the delta blues he has over 20 years of experience in comics working with marvel dc dark horse and oni press and in that time he's earned two eisner award nominations and the silver medal from the society of illustrators Oh my goodness, that was a tongue twister in the beginning there. I don't know why. Yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for me personally, like gritty art styles has never been my thing. Like getting mm. through Preacher was really hard. <laughs> yeah, um, really? But uh -huh. I was definitely like enthralled with this because it like adds so much to the story. Um, so what are your thoughts on like the integration of like you know, Jason Alexander's art and then, you know, the story from Rod Rodney Barnes. Like, did what'd you think that kind of combination? We're going to go with John. 
Yeah, yeah. So my my first thought was, okay, these are this is this is a dark story. These are vampires. They literally can't be out in the sun. Um, and and Jason Shaw has this thing with shadows that is just so mm-hmm. man. There's ah, oh, it's it's so hard to describe. I'm, I'm bad. I I'm not like a student of art. I can't draw a st- freaking stick figure. But man, there there there's something to say about the way that he melds like. Like the figures into the shadows, and and the, and then the way that like like light plays a huge role. Like the silhouetting in this book is so strong and so mm-hmm. evocative. And there's something about like the choice of colors. Um, that there's there's certain points. Like for example, when you see the girl with her eye, when she's crying on um, the vampire girl, she's crying and there's blood seeping from her eyes, and the red just pops because it's such a stark color on top of the you know on top of the other more muted colors like yeah it's, it's just so like mm-hmm. I, I don't know there's, there's something about it that just really fits the tone of this book that i don't think like you know like you're um like i i i love the you know the regular superhero books and stuff like that but um like i don't think that that tone would capture what jason's able to capture um in, in, in this story with with the silhouetting like i i just think it's really yeah, it's 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 very it's it's part of what makes this book so incredible. Like so you layer that on top of Rodney's um, you know, his 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 you know, you said flowery po- poetic dialogue and, mm-hmm, and knowledge mm-hmm. dropping and, and all top of it, everything just has impact. Impact, mm-hmm. impact. And I'm thinking like from the comic writing perspective, I'm thinking about like when um you know there's there's the scenes where the where the vampires just kind of go ham and they just kind of rip into people or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like Man, yeah, this is. I can tell the the Jasons having fun here. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> because when Roddy is in, he probably just has to go. Ah, the vampires fight, and then and then uh, Jason's like, "All right, bet." <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, you? You know, when I first um when I first started uh uh when I first read this, I did like a little mini review on Previous World Weekly, and I said that like you know this is like. I felt like this was like a TV show, right? And rereading this, and I meant that as a compliment, right? right. Um, and like rereading this, I was like, nah, because it loses it loses a quality the minute you put real life actors in it. Like mm-hmm. what Jason mm-hmm. Sean Alexander is doing, like you said, with Shadow in particular, is really impressive. And I would just kind of point out if you're a fan of Bill Sinkovich, if you're a fan of Al- Alex Malieve. Um, oh, yeah. and if you're, and it definitely reminded me of Ben Temple Smith a bit in 30 days and uh, 30 days a night, then this is kind of the book you want to, this book is definitely for you because there's, a, um, a texture quality to like his art style. Like it feels like you could like feel the grooves of the lines and the ink blots and the blood splatter on the page. It just has like a, a, a grit and a texture to it that is like absolutely amazing. And like that, that sort of abstract almost oil painting like style or maybe he is using oil painting as far as i know or maybe he's using an oil painting uh tool on photoshop for all i know you know what i mean but it really it really does add a layer to it that you know truthfully you don't really get with a lot of digital art now you know a lot Mm -hmm. of digital art does feel a little bit removed to me and i don't have that here assuming that this is in fact digital art Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. yeah, no. Mm-hmm. So when I was looking back into like his history, like the artist's history and stuff like that, you know, his upbringing, uh, he, you know, went through like a hard upbringing and then he used a lot of like expressionist kind of painting styles mm. uh, and really drawing on themes of like vulner- vulnerability and fear. Um, and like, I feel like he did a good job of putting that in there. Like, did you kind of notice those things? I feel like. What- no, Absolutely. Absolutely. No, like the, um, you know, that, that, that did like, you know, with the, I gave you the best examples of artists that do that. Right. Because there is a photorealistic quality to like what he's doing as well. And my problem, a lot of times with photorealism, I'm not going to name names, but if my problem with a lot of photorealism <laughs> is that it feels kind of emotionless, you know, and it really just kind of feels posed. <laughs> Jason Sean Alexander does not have that problem. Like mm-hmm. he's able to draw people like people and go for that photorealism, also find that abstraction, but also like they're acting. Like he is letting, he is, he is making them act and it's really, really powerful the way he does that. And that's kind okay. of not necessarily always a given with this type of art style. Oh, for sure, for sure. Oh man, when it comes to expressions, oh man, there's, there, there's I, I think about the fact that, that sometimes for a scene to really hit, you need that expression, the expression on the character's face to really, to really sell it, you know, to sell that particular panel. And uh, 
that happens so mm. often even in the small oh, look moment, at that even, yeah yeah even oh my gosh yeah like just like even in the small moments where like like when um Jose or do I say her name right? Is that Jose? I think it's Jose. <laughs> um, uh, Jose, yeah, the, the or, or Jose, Jose, mortician. Jose, yeah, 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 I think it's yeah. Jose, yeah, the mortician. Yeah, Jose, right? Jose. yeah um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to always pronounce the name wrong the first time um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I'm reading it on paper. But um, no, when there's like moments where she shrugs a lot, right? But I mm. love her expressions in the book <laughs> because because she's like like she's like in the midst like she's a mortician, so she sees dead things people all the time. Then mm -hmm. that things are coming to life and she should be more shocked, but she evokes like she's still able to like show the expression of the shock, like mm -hmm. while having this very like matter of fact look on her face, like, yeah, mm -hmm. they're dead. <laughs> yeah, <Right. laughs> they're, yeah, yeah, no, they're dead, but they're trying to kill us, you know, and she, ha mm -hmm. and she has like these moments where she shrugs, Um, you know, uh, Junior has moments where he where he like, kind of gives the what like like what you say expression like like like, right, on, yeah. like he like and and like those little nuances of expressions are so well done it's not even funny mm -hmm. <laughs> the dad's the dad's yellow eyes the oh, dad like man. yeah like yes. that that always kind of strikes me every time i see it on the page i'm like man that is really effective mm -hmm. Get a and comment it's, from Johnny saying, I will say that I didn't expect Abigail Adams to be a mad <laughs> and <Dominatrix>. <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah. When that yep. part got put in. I, I was wondering about that because she seemed like very like chill at the like in the earlier when they're doing the background the earlier years. And mm -hmm. but but when you live for a certain amount of time, like which is why their relationship, like with her saying that she wanted to be separated, makes mm -hmm. so much sense. You guys are immortal. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. Like, how long are we gonna like there's no death to do us apart anymore? Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> um, and she kind of takes on this 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 new role. Um, yeah, yeah, this, the expressions are, are and the personalities are perfect, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I just really love the twist on like character or not characters, but like people you know from history, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden you're like Oh, okay. I never thought about that possibility. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. right, right. <laughs> now, did you? I know there were so many great art moments, but was there one particular scene or art moment that really stuck with you or stuck out to you? Um, mm. Okay, Troy. No, I, you know, I was hoping Johnny would grab it. Maybe he did. Like, there's a, there's a, uh, you know, so there's a, uh, 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 when Adams like mobilizes his his vampire uh squad right like they attack people inside a um a subway and there's this great two-page splash that's just again it just it emotes and it, like it's super expressive and it's gory and it's dynamic and it's everything that like you want from a comic when you when you turn that page and you see a splash page that's what you're supposed to get you know um i absolutely love that i like i legit like hit that I, again i've read this thing three times there it is yeah <laughs> I read this thing like three times and it still struck me when I opened it. I was like, wow, I forgot how good that was. Yeah. Yeah. No, those were intense scenes. <laughs> um, <laughs> what about you, John? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's a particular scene. I believe it's an issue five or six. Um, so I, I'm, I'm good for the, I'm, I, I love the, I love all art in general. Like I, like I, I take a long time to read comics because I literally am just like staring at the pages. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> like, like just like taking it in and enjoying like the art, the, the, the work that goes into the pages. Um, mm -hmm. but I like your shareable one-liners, right? Like your, your shareable one-liner pages. And yeah. there's one in particular where, um, there's there's a bunch of vampires and it's and it's um they're all black and they say i um i think we need to have a talk about patriotism and <laughs> for, <laughs> for some reason that that panel hits so hard for me because mm -hmm. the way they're looking it's like like i feel i i feel like i feel it right mm -hmm. like like I feel this in my day to day. My my day to day is like what, what you know. What is America supposed to be? What is it? What is it supposed to be to be an American citizen? What is it? What does it mean to achieve the American dream? And when they are all like lined up like that, it, it's kind of like yeah, we got a message to send, you know. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I love moments like that, you know. And I know I, I know that's both Rodney and Jason having their part in that in that scene, but it's so perfect. Like the 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 like their posture is perfect. Like it it would have like it wouldn't have sold as well. I think if they were like scary vampire teeth showing and about to attack i don't think it would have had the same effect as them mm -hmm. kind of standing there like like what's up like what's mm -hmm. like we're waiting for an answer to this question you know what i mean so right, I love, yeah yeah i love, <laughs> I love panels like right. that you know 
<laughs> like, definitely like have attitude you can like see it in like the eyes of every character like ex i don't know he expressionism i can see it yeah. <laughs> in, like oh, yeah. every single character absolutely oh my god this was such a good book um so let's go ahead and start kind of getting into really talking about our our final overall thoughts about the comic <laughs> All right. So me, I went into this kind of like, okay, cop drama, not normally my thing, but mm -hmm. I do like a good murder mystery, like murder, you know, murder show. Yeah. <laughs> so I went into this and I love vampires. I went into this, um, you know, not knowing what I was going to expect, especially when I, when I heard about the, the presidential kind of aspect mm -hmm. of it. But I feel like this is such a unique story and it's got so many, like you said, like poignant themes that I feel um, you don't see often enough in comics. Mm -hmm. um, so what did what are your overall thoughts now that now that actually Troy, let me go with this. Now that you've read it for the third time, <laughs> how do you feel like on your third go? I always had the same reaction, which is like, damn it, I should have like got this as it was coming out because I've been reading it in trade paperback, and you know, again, I like just looking at the artwork. I'm just sort of like. Man, I like this was a really this is a really well done series and it, it evolves. I mean, not to give anything away, but it goes so beyond just this as the series goes on. Like Spawn shows up at some point in time. There's a there's a spin-off book about a, a nightmare blog. Like it just expands and expands and expands, but it still kind of creeps this uh this taut, like tense suspense feel to it. Um yeah, it's just it's just it's just it's the type of imaginative uh storytelling that you really can only do in comics and yeah it's it's not just a good comic by a black creator it's just a good horror comic period so or just a good comic period so yeah i highly recommend this series for sure did you say spawn yeah spawn right, spawn right. shows up in the book <laughs> yes i feel like, like this is like one comic that you're like there's no way that you will predict what's happening next because mm -hmm. like I yeah okay now I have to keep reading yeah right <laughs> right, right right holy crap okay what yeah. about you John uh yeah this is definitely my kind of series this is mm -hmm. this is I mean like I am a sucker like so funny thing is I'm not like typically a horror fan but I'm not a horror fan because I don't like horror I'm not a horror fan uh, mainly because of bad horror movies so mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like mm -hmm. like I, I've seen so many bad horror movies that it just like has like you know made me like okay this is probably gonna be bad right <laughs> um i don't i i do like horror comics a lot better i don't know if it's because i because i i, I i'm a comic head or what but like i've read more good comic uh, or horror comics than i've watched of um uh, horror movies if that if that makes sense mm -hmm. um so going into this i i was like okay it's a horror let's see how i feel about it but i know it's by Rodney bars I, I like pretty much everything he puts out um but then, like, as soon as we get into it, like, like we we talked about earlier with the opening with the father son dynamics, I was like, okay, this has strong thematics. Um, okay, we're using captions. I'm a big caption head. Like, I, I like mm -hmm. both types of comics. You know, the, the, mm -hmm. some some don't use as many captions; others do, depending on the, the way you want to tell the story. But in, in in this case, the captions serve very very well. Um, like it, it gets because it gets into each character's inner thoughts, including Adam's. Right. Um, yeah. So I, I, I really, I really like it's how it's. I, I, re, I really like the way that it's used. Um, that there's, there's just so much, like the dialogue feels perfect. There's like no moments where I feel like ah, that I need mm -hmm. to be there, or this is too wordy, or like ah, is this taking me too long to read? And like, can we just get to the? Floor? I never felt like that once in this right. book. Um, which is interesting because it does. I think it probably does have more dialogue than the average comic, right? Um. But it, nothing feels like fluff. It all feels like like in its proper place. It all feels necessary, you know. Um, and like, yeah, and, and and to be able to tell a story like that, and, and again, and, and so far, just in these first six issues, is is there's something to be said about that? You know what I mean? Like that's mm -hmm. there isn't there isn't like that is prime comic bookness right there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and it goes all the way from the obviously from Rodney's art. To Jason's, uh, to, to to Jason's. I'm sorry, Ronnie's um writing to Jason's art, and then and then to the lettering too. Like the like the lettering is like like such a perfect fit. The mm -hmm. imperfect bubbles, the um yeah, the, you know yeah. the, the sway edges around the captions, 
the like like yeah. like the like when you when you get some of the um some of the sound effects that like sit so well within the art you know uh they, they work where they work with the shadows really well um like that, that that stuff like it's just a really good comic production and like that that's the stuff i love about the comic medium that I'm sure if they do a show of this, and you know, Rodney's on TV too, so I'm sure that right. if there was ever a show, he'd probably be over the show as well. Um, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but even when the show comes out, and even if he's over, even if he makes it well, there's still gonna be something unique about the comic artness of this that is that is just so powerful. So yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I I definitely got that same like feel of uh just the art capturing so much, and along with like Rodney's kind of like background in screenwriting it kind of felt like watching a movie almost mm -hmm. or like a storyboard like it and i think when you were talking about how like all of the the dialogue seems like it's meant to be and i feel like that has to do with like how good rodney barnes is with like his screenwriting yeah, um, right, yeah. yeah no yeah. this needs to be a movie <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah it should like, be actually for real <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got Specs Vision saying, you're my boy, John. <laughs> oh, what's going on? <laughs> and, uh, okay. Now, since we don't have a movie yet or a TV series yet for this, what should people read if they're interested in maybe the same themes? Mm. Like, what, what would you recommend to people who enjoy Philadelphia? Let's go with uh, John. Yeah, so there's a... There's a few books that come to mind for different reasons. Um, for the horror aspectness of it and the art and the feel and, and, and good captioning and good dialogue and stuff that just, like, I love the feel of the impact. Like, you never feel like you're turning, like, like you feel like you're having experience the whole time. You never feel like you're slogging through pages. I'm, I'm going to say Gideon Falls by Jeff Lemire is probably a good mm -hmm. one. Um, like, that whole series is just... It takes you for turns, and there's this whole thing about this barn in it. And and when you look at uh, Andreas, uh, oh, last names, Lord have mercy, uh, Sarantino, I believe is I yeah, Sarantino, right yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, and and the way again, the shadowing, and, and the way that there's like like Troy mentioned earlier, texture. Um, uh, Gideon Falls is just an excellent, excellent series for that. Um, another one for art. That's, now this one's not horror in the same way it's a different type of horror and it's a different type of art and there's a different there's very fantasy elements to this but another th another story that comes to mind is also monstrous so um mm. yeah M monstrous is, is by uh marjorie lou i believe uh again names i'm probably mispronouncing i'm really bad no, no, then, yeah, no, you're you're on it you're on it <laughs> <laughs> and uh i believe santa to i'm going i'm going off of memory with these uh with these with these uh mm. authors and uh, artists um Santa Takeda, I believe, Monstrous is a is a is, a, is another really really good story. Um, like a beautiful, beautiful. I mean, some of the most unique artwork you've ever seen. I promise mm -hmm. you. Um, and like these heavy um, themes and heavy fantasy elements. Uh, and then the, the the last thing I'll mention um, that comes to mind is is um, okay. So any honestly anything by James Tinian, <laughs> <laughs> anything by James Tinian the fourth. But um, but specifically Department of Truth comes to mind um mm. again because of the style of like the lettering and the art and then there's these powerful every issue there's an overarching thing about about the things that we believe and how people kind of uh propagandize truth right mm. and, and and it's it's such a conceptual book and um the art just fits so well with with um like I guess I guess getting those themes across, right? Mm. So that's that's James Tinian, and I, I was blanking on the name. I think I believe it's Bidikar on the on the on the art. Maybe I yeah, I'm blanking on the on the on the art art name. Mm. But yeah, excellent, excellent stuff. So check those those books out if you can. Oh my gosh, those are really right. good recommendations, especially Monstrous. Oh my god, that's so good. Oh yeah, I love um, it. <laughs> what about you, Troy? Um, all right, so I'm going to say I'm gonna give three. <laughs> um I'm going to say if you are looking for something in this in a similar tone, you should probably read Ribbon Queen by Garth Ennis and Jason Burroughs. Uh, that just wrapped up, uh, I think, this week, actually, at uh, AWA. And it's basically about uh, a, a cop who thinks that the SWAT team, the SWAT team leader that rescued this girl actually is the person that kidnapped her. But it goes way beyond that. 
And it's a interesting, like, again, just a like crime horror type of thing. Definitely in the wheelhouse in the same lane as Philadelphia. Um, also, I got to point out, there is, like I said, I mentioned earlier, there's Nita Hawes' Nightmare blog. Uh, and Nita is a character who shows up in the series. And then Rodney is also simultaneously writing a book about her. And I think that story, if I remember correctly, takes place in Baltimore specifically, uh, which is also nice right. to see. Um, and nice. similar and similar to this, similar to, um, yeah, similar to uh, uh, Philadelphia, you know, he re utilizes real life locales, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, definitely check that out. And, um, I, you know, I'm going to tell people, definitely check out Sirens of the City from Boom Studios. Um, the artwork is phenomenal and it's got a very dark story. Um, and it's just a really, really well-crafted like well-designed comic, you know, um, it's Kari Randolph and it's Joanne Starr. Um, yeah, definitely check that out because that book is, it's cool. It's a cool little book and I don't see a lot of people talking about it. And it's got like a, an energy to it that is different from Philadelphia, but also is kind of in the same genre in a lot of ways. Right. Right, definitely. Sorry, Chris, I gotta write all these down now. <laughs> right, I was taking notes. <laughs> these are so many good recommendations, and I feel like we've only like skimmed on some of like the topics and themes and everything. There's so much we could talk about with this comic, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, we are running a little out of time. So mm -hmm. I will go ahead and wrap things up with this. All right. Cool. All right. All right. This is your reminder to pick up Philadelphia at your friendly local comic shop and to find a comic shop near you, head over to comicshoplocator.com. And I wanted to go ahead and give our guests a little chance to kind of plug anything that they've got going on. John, what have you got going on? Tell us uh, where people can find you and all yeah. your things that you're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you can find me pretty much anywhere uh, under fourth wall. That's IV. W A L L, yes, it's a play on me being John Robinson the fourth. So mm -hmm. I V W A L L, -L um, fourth wall uh, on Instagram. Um, it's uh, it's going to be Scarit, so that's S C E R I T Z. Um, but everywhere else, it's pretty much fourth wall. Um, uh, I'm ongoing series Scorpio that I'm that I'm working on. Um, it's uh, we're we're going to issue four pretty soon, uh, and. We have a spinoff of that, a one shot called Leo. That's kind of a coming of age story uh, for the for the Leo character in that book, um, because the the story does span all the zodiac. So definitely be on the lookout mm. for that. And and also I'm doing a I'm doing a quick uh, I'm going to do a quick run of a quick quick starter run for uh, some variant covers that are exclusive uh, to the Scorpio series because when they first came out, you know, I'm a, I was a brand new uh, writer and funds were limited to get all those variant covers. So <laughs> now we're doing a full fledged, you know, now that I'm in there, I'm doing a full fledged variant cover run. So be on the lookout for that. Um, again, you could, you can find me, um, on all social media, um, at fourth wall or at Scarits. That's S C E R I T Z. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Check out the Kickstarter. That sounds awesome. And yeah, as a like beginning comic writer myself, I'm like, yeah, it's really hard <laughs> to get the funding <laughs> together for your own stuff. But right, um, yeah. I can't wait to, to check that out. Um, and what about you, Troy? What have you got going on? Um, speaking of funding your own stuff, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actively working on a what I'm calling like my 17 plus comics magazine. It's called Afro Futures. Um, it's slated to drop. Uh, I want to say in June. It'll go to Kickstarter. Oh, well, I, I won't say which crowdfunding platform yet, but I kind of feel like it's going to be Kickstarter at this point. Um, and yeah, we got some really great artists on it, and it's just a series of uh, a series of short stories. It's also kind of uh, well, not in a big way. It's um, uh, uh, also has a music theme to it as well, which has kind of been my wheelhouse of late because of uh, some of the other stuff I've worked on in the past. So yeah, like we got this robot host DJ and she's just kind of presenting all these different Afrofuturism stories. So there's a little bit of everything, a little bit of drama, suspense, thriller, horror, science fiction. We're doing all the things. Superhero, it's all in there. So definitely check that out. Definitely keep an eye on that. And you can follow me at TJA Comics and I'm definitely going to be showing people uh glimpses of it uh beyond just black history month but over the next couple of months and everybody i show it to tells me it's cool so <laughs> i'm i'm encouraged <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and yeah everyone make sure that you're supporting you know 
your comic writers on, especially on their Kickstarters. I feel like right now that is kind of like how writers and, and comic artists are able to like really tell their story. And so like go out there and support them. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. also I just wanted to say thank y'all both for coming and joining me and like this was a great talk. I love this. I wish we could talk more about this. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for inviting me on. This is awesome. Yeah, I, lo I love talking comics. So be able to do on a live show is like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to have you on again, definitely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Awesome. And for everyone out there, if you have a graphic novel that you'd like us to talk about, leave a comment below and your choice could be picked for a future book. This is also your reminder to follow us at Previews World and Free Comic Book Day on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Finally, thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. Heroes are a dime a dozen, but comic fans are priceless. We'll see you next time. Do you have a suggestion for a graphic novel that you'd like to see discussed on the panel? Leave us a comment and your choice could be picked for a future episode.